yeah? And setting this side equal to the negative log of Ka times Hx over x negative, we need to simplify this. Again, negative log of hydrogen ion gave us pH. Negative log of the right-hand side needs to be simplified, and we'll do so by writing pH is now found by negative log of the Ka minus the log of the ratio of the acid over base. Negative log of Ka is known as the pKa. Negative log of the ratio Hx over x negative can actually be simplified to make it a positive log of the base over acid. By flipping that, we get base over acid, and we like to do that to make an addition sign here pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate base over its acid. This is a very famous equation for buffered systems, and I believe it actually appeared this year on the AP exam. It's known as the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation. Let's take a closer look at this equation on the next page. The equation we wrote, again, we could write it right here. The pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the ratio of the base over acid, the conjugate base over its acid. So pH is equal to the pKa, this went here, pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. That's what I'm trying to denote as A negative for the anion. I just wrote X negative a moment ago. A negative over HA, perhaps you like X negative over HX. What we're referring to is the conjugate base acid pair. Again, this is a very famous buffering equation. It has a title after two gentlemen, Henderson Hasselbeck. H-A-S-S-E-L-B-A-C-H, the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation. Using this equation is quite easy. Developing it once for the algebra was a little bit tedious, but once we see it, it's now just a matter of plug and chug. Let's try one and show the Henderson-Hasselbeck in operation. It asks us, what is the pH of a buffer that is 0.12 molar in lactic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium lactate. For lactic acid, Ka is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. We could go through the process of using an ice chart, but the key here says that it's a buffered solution. The Henderson-Hasselbeck equation is so much easier. So we simply plug in pH is equal to the pKa which really is nothing more than the negative log of the Ka provided, 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. pKa is negative log of Ka plus, whoops, plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. The acid is given to us as 0.12 molar. Its conjugate base is given to us in terms of its salt, sodium lactate. Notice the common ion is the negative name. Lactate is the salt from the lactic acid ion, and its concentration was 0.10 molar. We just simply hit, and I'll grab my calculator. Negative log of 1.4 E negative 4 plus the log of 0.1 divided by 0.12. And when I hit that, I get the pH directly as 3.77 pH units. The Henderson Hasselbeck equation takes pKa plus the log of ratio of base over acid where the conjugate base came 
from the sodium lactate common ion. Preparing a buffer. How many moles of ammonium chloride must be added to 2 liters of a 0.1 molar ammonia solution to form a buffer whose pH is 9? Assume that the addition of ammonium chloride does not change the volume of our solution. Well, let's get a handle of what's going on. We have a weak base, ammonia, being placed into water and setting up an equilibrium with its conjugate acid, ammonium, and the base, hydroxide. They give us a Kb value from Appendix D of ammonia, and it was found to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is a base equilibrium, so we need a Kb. Ammonia happens to be listed in that small chart of Kb values found in our Appendix D, and it's the same here, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so we want to know ultimately the moles of ammonium chloride. Here's what we could start with. Knowing that the pH of the solution is 9.0, that would tell me that the pOH of our solution is 14 minus 9, giving me a value of 5. So the concentration then is 10 to the negative pOH, and that's a value of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Knowing that, the pH turned into pOH and ultimately could be used to solve for the concentration of hydroxide, here's what we now know. The concentration of OH negative, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar units. What else do we know? We know the concentration of ammonia was 0.1 molar, so I can record that value right here. Ultimately, we'd like to know the concentration of ammonium to work it into moles of ammonium chloride. So let's set up our equilibrium. Giving the value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, that would be set equal to the concentration of the ion ammonium times the concentration of the hydroxide ion, which was determined through the use of the pH, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. We set that over the 0.1 molar, the value of the ammonia given to us in the problem. What we're about to find through the algebra is the concentration of ammonia, which ultimately is the same as the salt we put in, ammonium chloride. So let's hit solving for ammonium. I'll begin by hitting one point eight e negative five times point one divided by one e negative five oops negative five and I find a value of point one eight molar as the concentration for ammonium which ultimately is ammonium chloride as well. So therefore alt we need to find the number of moles and we're now just ready to use our molarity problem, where the molarity is equal to x moles per liter of solution. We were given a volume of 2 liters, so we just need to cross multiply. The 0.18 times 2 liters would show a value of 0.36 moles of ammonium chloride. In our solution to prepare a buffer, we had a 0.1 molar ammonia solution. What we wanted to know was how much of its conjugate base coming from ammonium chloride, that's its conjugate acid, sorry, ammonium chloride produces its conjugate acid, ammonium. So we set up our equilibrium problem. Looking at the value of Kb, set it in equal to the concentration of ammonium times OH negative, which was determined through the use of the pH set over the value of ammonia, the 0.1. That gave us the value of ammonium, the polyatomic ion. And then simply cross multiplying with the volume of two liters would tell us to add 0.36 moles of our salt to the ammonia solution to create a buffer. In our last example of preparing a buffer, 
Let's try another one. We'll calculate the concentration of sodium benzoate that must be present in a 0.2 molar solution of benzoic acid, and we want to have it at a pH of 4.00. Let's consider the equilibrium. We have an acid, benzoic acid, HA, all right? And it's in equilibrium with its ions, H plus and A negative. When we look up the value using Appendix D for benzoic acid, Appendix D for benzoic acid shows a value of 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. Since this is indeed an acid equilibrium, the pH is truly telling us the hydrogen ion directly. Remember, 10 to the negative pH gives us the hydrogen ion concentration. And so that value would be 10 to the negative 4. We also know the concentration of the acid in the original solution given to us as 0.2 molar. Let's use our equilibrium to pull out the value of the negative, the A negative, the conjugate base of our acid. So 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, the value of our Ka. Is that equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which is 10 to the negative fourth, or 1 times 10 to the negative fourth, times the benzoate polyatomic ion, I'll just simply write as A negative, set over the concentration of 0.2, the original acid value. When we solve for the concentration of A negative, that will represent the sodium benzoate. So I'll hit for the concentration of benzoate ion. We would start 6.3 E negative 5 times 0.2 divided by 1 E negative 4. And I find a value of 0.126 molar. Now, we were only asked to go as far as the concentration up above. We had to go to moles. So with this value, as soon as I find molarity, that truly is the formula for sodium benzoate's concentration. And that is our answer here. To prepare a buffer, we set up an equilibrium. The salt is then used to determine how much of its conjugate base would need to be added or conjugate acid if we started with the base as an ammonia's example. All right, let's turn the video off and digest what we've learned so far.